Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Welcome again to another episode of Carpos Rambling Videos, but you know, it's 420 today, so uh, I thought I would talk about conversations a little bit. Hopefully this board is not too hard to read, but really I'm going to read it off and it's more for me than you, I guess. I actually picked this up you know, a month ago when I was going to make videos using the whiteboard. And then yesterday I went to Goodwill and I found like twice as many pens as this, dry erase pens, in a huge bag for like $2.99 at Goodwill. So I'm like, all right, that's a sign. Every color one could imagine. So I decided I would utilize that to make videos. So how can we have better conversations? And this is something that I think all of us can benefit from. Every one of us has a bad conversation now and again where we end up arguing with somebody or another person calls us names or another person does this or does that or we do something stupid or we get upset or they get upset, whatever it may be. There are some very simple rules that can help us. And I'm only going to share what my experience is and hopefully it'll help you in your own life. The first one, of course, is listen. And, God, I hate using this thing, but it's easier than pointing. I don't want to mess it up. Listen, then just don't, don't just wait to speak. So many of us are just waiting till it's our turn to talk. And I'm speaking from experience. I'm like that. The thing is, I really do listen to what other people are saying. So it makes it hard because I get maybe accused sometimes of overriding people. But that's another thing that I wanted to mention. There's different forms of conversation. Some people have deeper conversations. Some people use uh, like one-on-one -on -one where each person talks for a few minutes then the other person talks other people interject back and forth and it really depends on the subject you're talking about and whether you're gonna lose your train of thought or not um, the second one is to feel the person in their body language and really understand that means that if a person doesn't want to have the conversation don't have it or if you can tell a person's getting angry learn to walk away that kind of stuff uh, stick to mutually understood topics which means don't go out and start talking about uh, like quantum physics to somebody who has no idea what you're talking about or you know explain over explaining a specific topic that is hard to uh, convey without understanding the full background and those are just a few things that we can all do to you know kind of read other people uh, but then we get into never tell others what to believe that one is constantly bugging me I mean it's People interject within conversations these little points of, well, a person should be living this way and a person should be living that way. And really there is no consensus on how a person should be living, but judgment runs rampant. You know, it's kind of like the old religious grandmother who's always judging everybody and, you know, her grandson and, and their, <laughs> who he chooses to marry outside of their religion, that kind of stuff. But don't take a subject personal, like beliefs. And that's a huge one. We often connect ourselves to a subject and we feel strongly about it and I said be, like beliefs because often religion is where that comes up the most if somebody pokes and prods at somebody about their religion they may get upset and they may get frustrated and that's fine too because that goes back to know when to walk away from a topic okay read a lot about those you don't understand that one is something that I can't express enough read about the people that you don't know read about the people that you feel are the enemy or the bad guy and I'm not, tr I'm not trying to preach here I kind of feel like it with this stupid thing I'm gonna ditch that but uh, it's something that all of us can learn you know when we think that we're right we tend to argue our point strong and um, if we don't understand those around us or those we're talking about or talking to then it's really hard for us to actually come across in the way that we intend to. Uh, be willing to look at other angles and possibilities. And this comes down to xenophobia to some extent, which is xenophobia is just being fearful of other cultures or other systems. And that's pretty common, pretty rampant in today's world. There's nothing we can really do about it. I mean, except for uh, expose people to more stuff. And, you know, that's just kind of the world we live in. So... Um, the next one is to ask yourself what sub what subject why the subject matters so much and be careful that it's not an impasse for evidence and that means being able to let go. I think I have a visitor. I have to let him know that I'm making a video. Nice. 
Yep. I guess I could edit that out, but I can't do that with my software, so I could start the whole video over, or I could just make two separate videos, but I just want to upload this as one. Anyhow, if there's no way to come to a conclusion on the subject, then there's no way to finalize the conversation, there's no way to get anybody any further along, then sometimes it's time to let go. And that's my opinion anyway. Is, pop, is propaganda a possible culprit? That one is consistently... <clears throat> I hear people repeat some bullshit that they heard on Fox News so many times in my daily life when I'm reading across forums and articles. So many times. The Hill bot, you know, still talking about Hillary Clinton. <sighs> Move on, people. Move on. Um, still talking about Obama. You know, it's... And you hear these points repeated every so often when some newscaster or some dumb shit Tucker Carlson guy, you know, decides that they're going to ramble on. And everybody believes these propagandists that run the media. And I'm not just saying it's on Fox, MSNBC, CNN, it's all the same bullshit. It's just from different angles. But um, is it propaganda? Sometimes we're arguing over the stupidest fucking things, pardon my language, but we're arguing over shit that we heard on the news, not anything that we actually feel or understand or have experienced in our lives. So you hear two people fighting about some point, these talking points that you may have heard already yourself on a talk show or some other place, and you think, okay, they're repeating everything they've heard, but what does either one of, the, what do either one of these people understand about the subject at hand? if anything, um, beyond what they've heard. And yes, we have to resort to experts, but which experts, right? Um, so I'm moving on here. This is beware of logical fallacies time. And now I'm starting to get into it here. I, at first, I wasn't sure how I was going to do this video, but <sighs> these are some of the mo There are so many fallacies. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people who don't even know what the word fallacy means. So I'm going to kind of put it in, uh, you know, elementary form to explain to people some of the most common logical fallacies. Because there's nothing embarrassing about not understanding what a fallacy is. But even those who do, there are so many that it's hard to remember them sometimes. So, <coughs> these are the ones I've experienced in my life. The first one is ad hominem, which means to the man. And uh, it's attacking the person or character, often as a diversion. Meaning that if somebody says, well, I don't believe in your religion, they say, oh, well, you're just a sinner, so I'm not surprised. Or they start talking about all the problems you've made in the past when you bring up something they're doing wrong now. Or if you call somebody out on, hey, man, you shouldn't call me names, and they're like, oh, well, you called me this back in 74, that kind of shit. And often it can go into the point where a person doesn't even know the other person. So they're like, oh, well, you're just some stupid, dumb hippie standing behind a camera with long hair and a dumb t-shirt on. What the fuck do you know about better conversations. Uh, you know, you're a dumbass. You made this video about this back then, so you must not know this or this. And there's always guys like that out there, and that's fine. Fuck you guys. But the point is that it doesn't matter. You have to learn to handle your own and be able to, you know, take it, uh, take opinions from people that actually matter to you, not just random strangers. And that's difficult on the internet sometimes. But uh, the ad hominem attack comes often on the internet. A lot more than it might come from those you love, but when it comes from those you love, it can hurt. It's different from telling people the truth. An attack is a diversion from a conversation into the person, attacking the person's character by saying, well, your evidence might be good, but your character sucks, so it's not true. The next one is argument from authority. It's kind of the opposite of ad hominem. It's um, truth due to expertise. This would be like, the, the completely illogical fallacy that, well, Trump's run companies, uh, successful companies, so therefore he'll be a good president because he's a good businessman. That's a lot an illogical fallacy, if you will. Um, I, I, sorry to bring politics into it, but that's the kind of, those are the kind of things I hear. Or, well, this guy is this, you know, and, and he's worked here, so he knows best. You know, he's in politics, he, he's in there, and so he knows what's best for us. Meanwhile, people won't even trust scientific experts on whether or not the climate's warming or whether or not, uh, you know, gun murder rates are up 
you know, because studies don't matter unless a person wants to believe it. So when we get into a conversation and a person brings up a study and we don't want to believe the study, we can dis dismiss it. But if it's something that we support, naturally we'll latch on to it. So uh, argument from authority basically just means that somebody who you think is important said it was true. <clears throat> the bandwagon fallacy is it's true because it's popular. And this is used by the left and the right in politics. This is used by Christians a lot. When I've had conversations, they say, well, how would a book like this survive so long without it being true? Or politicians say, you know, well, they wouldn't get into office if they didn't know what they were doing. You know, businesses, they wouldn't get big if they weren't a good company, that kind of stuff, you know. These are fallacies that don't really add up. There's a lot of under the scenes, behind the scenes kind of corruption. So the bandwagon fallacy allows us to say everybody else believes this because the media says it, so I'm going to believe it too. And everyone falls for that one. Dogmatism is kind of a fallacy with many facets. It's a mini, multifaceted, many formed type, you know, fallacy. You could go into a million different aspects of it. It's like a spider. But uh, basically, it's simple. Others are biased, but you're objective. How many times have you heard that? Had an argument with somebody where you may have a good point, and they say, well, you're just biased, you're just a liberal, or you're just a libtard, you're just a conservative, you're just a cuck, whatever it might be, and instead of listening to you, they decide to attack you. And this goes back to the ad hominem attack, personal attack, because their dogmatism doesn't allow them to listen to your point of view. Um... <clears throat> It's bullshit. Everyone's biased, and everyone tries to be objective. Most people, anyway. Uh, the false dilemma, black and white fallacy, that means either you support A or you support B. And I don't mean to bring politics into this, but it's the most, it's the easiest way to explain it. For example, when I was opposed to Trump, and I talked bad about him during the last election, people would say, well, you must, you know, they'd say, you're Hillary. I still get comments from people who, one just the other day where somebody's like, you're Hillary, whatever, you're Hillbot lost. And I was like, look, I didn't vote for Hillary. I don't understand why anybody who doesn't vote for A has to be for B. Maybe I'm just an independent person. But people can't handle that. They, they have to put you in the other camp. Because there are people who want to argue and don't know what to do with the person who's neutral on something. Uh... Even if you dislike all politicians, you have to take a side or else you're some kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put it. Anyhow, to move on, the faulty analogy, which is A is exactly like B, which means, okay, well, you support this political party, therefore you must support pedophilia and rape. Or you support this, therefore you support uh, the, you know, the destruction of human rights. If you associate everybody who believes one thing with the other people within that group that may believe something different, but that share similar beliefs in one part of it, um, it's it's saying it's basically a false equivalency, if you will, and that's a hard one. You know, you're a hippie, so you must be dirty, or you're rich, therefore you must be greedy. That's one I guess I can give to the rich. I actually respect many rich people because I've read in the stories people like Warren Buffett, who actually has earned his way, and he's very intelligent, reads a lot of books, you know, gives a lot of uh, charity out, but still he's rich, therefore he's the enemy. If you are this, then you must be this. And it's hard for people to understand that just like all the rich people aren't selfish assholes, the rich need to understand that all the poor people aren't selfish assholes that just want to be on welfare and not do anything either. A lot of people want to work, so it's hard. It goes both ways. And uh, so the next one would be the non sequitur, or does not follow. And uh, this basically means you love and support A, so you should love and support B. And that's a really hard one. Uh, that, that once again falls into religion, for example. You might believe that, well, therefore you believe in Jesus, therefore you must belong to this denomination of the church in order to be correct. Or... Um, <clears throat> Since you like this type of ice cream, you should like this type of ice cream. It can go from something very mundane to something very intense, but it also, for example, all the Republicans who fit into one category, because if they feel like, the, if they step out of line, they're like, well, you like this, so you have to like this. If you're for this, then you have to be for this. And people feel pressured on in all political parties and camps into believing a certain thing. The same thing happens with church. And I keep saying church and 
politics because those are the two things who se that seem to be the most political. And since Easter's tomorrow, hey, why not? Actually, I just got back from a church function. It was an Easter egg hunt. And naturally, they're giving out their, all the literature, want you to come to their church. It actually kind of creeped me out, because there's a lot of uh, um, <clears throat> Pacific Islanders in that church, I could see. And they had their security force. They're, they're like the security guys that have a little security thing for the church at the local park. They were standing around the Easter egg kind of thing, waiting, you know, making sure none of the kids went in early to get eggs. They just looked kind of angry. But I, I'm not saying they were. I'm just saying... But the one guy had a shirt that said, every little thing is going to be all right. It was a Bob Marley shirt, and so I figured he must be all right. Um, you can't judge people by how they look. And I totally respect people who go to church not picking on religion. But I've had discussions with church-going folk who, you know, assume that since I'm a certain way, since I don't believe that I'm going to burn in hell, and that makes a hard conversation. So uh, the last one is uh, the red herring, which is diverting back to an irrelevant topic. Every one of us has faced this with people. Um, when a person gets cornered, they just go back to something you said earlier, or something someone else said, or something totally that you'd already dealt with and talked about. Uh, so, the last things I want to mention are, is being smart or a good speaker does not make you right. And that includes myself. When I'm out there talking, people are like, oh, you think that since you can make videos and talk, you know, I've had some some critics that are like, since you, you know, think you can speak well most of the time, you think that you're, I say most of the time, that's my addition, uh, that you think that you're right. I'm like, no, I don't. I don't think I'm right. I love to be proven wrong. I love a good debate. I love a good argument. But when I say argument, people take it wrong. I like the Aristotelian argument, which is present your point, I'll present mine, and we'll both walk away with something. So uh, the next one is, uh, and, and that goes for intellects too, first of all, you know. The people who are out there using big words, I, cumbersome language. I made a video, if you, I guess if you looked, wanted to see it, it would be called Cumbersome Language, but it was about how people want to use these huge words. And I try to avoid that because I want to include all people. And unfortunately, the intellects I've met in my life seem to be kind of pious and self-righteous where, you know, not the dumber a person is, but the more kind of down-to-earth a person is, the less involved they are in really caring how they appear and mannerisms and perfection, you know, like this English-type proper, I guess would be the word. I don't like prim and proper. I think it's a bunch of bullshit. And all through the, you know, 16th, 17th, 18th centuries, people are trying to get into this proper state and that all the peasants don't, you know, oh, those peasants, and we, we are proper and we have manners. And then there are a bunch of inbreds, and they ended up, you know, just basically dominating and, and hoarding their money and sitting in their castles. The point being that the poor had more fun. I guess I can put it that way. I know that's kind of irrelevant, but... <laughs> um, the goal of a conversation is that both people walk away more aware, and so many people forget that. That is, like, the most crucial thing I can add to this whole thing. You're not there to win. Okay, you're not, if you're at a debate, you're there to win. If you're there in a conversation, you're there to talk, you're there to learn. And so sometimes you press and press and pry and you're like, oh really, what's, what's, where'd you get this? Where'd you answer this? And people get overwhelmed when you're asking for actual evidence and then they get upset and then they start using these ad hominem attacks. But uh, ask yourself if an argument is even anything important. That's one that's often forgotten because we get so heated and involved in something. We say, wait a minute, we're arguing over whether... Uh, the core of the earth is molten or solid, or whether space is real, whether the earth is flat. And uh, to bring that to a close, I think the earth flat argument is more of a comedy than anything. But um, those are, the last one is don't take anything too seriously, unless necessary. And sometimes it is necessary to be serious, but not always. And so uh, I guess that's all I have to say. I don't want to go on any further. Those are some of my life lessons, and uh, I hope you all, all do well in your lives. I wanted to show you this last thing. Even though I'm going to make a video about this separately, check this out. This is a silkworm with a uh, cordyceps militaris growing on it. Can't get it to focus. Yeah, it's a silkworm with cordyceps on it. I just ordered these with my fungus order. Just awesome. Love it couldn't resist sharing. My life lesson would be to avoid fungus that grow on you.
<laughs> take your brain over like they do with uh, silkworms and ants and anyhow I'll talk to you soon have a wonderful day and uh, I hope that one person out there gains something from this because there's a lot of people out there that I've talked with online that just really suck at discussion and they get upset and uh, some people just you know maybe they think that it's about competition but sometimes maybe that's just how it is you know human nature ooh, ooh. You know, peacocking, showing our feathers, or kind of being the alpha, you know, it's all BS. Really, it's about what, you know, you've got to be able to show the money kind of thing. So, uh, take care, everybody. Hopefully, we can have rational discussions as humans, and in the future, we will. I don't want it to be so boring that everybody's totally logical, though. I, and there's a kind of a weird line there that has to be drawn between logic and being like oh yes this is correct this is correct and just being like eh who knows eh. so uh anyway talk to you soon peace out